you know, you work so hard in school and you're just supposed to like take the first salary that's given to you. I don't know. I just don't think that's right. I think that I've seen a lot of really smart people, especially where I went to school. I went to Cornell. I've seen a really large, a lot of really smart people just get lowballed by the first offer. Uh, and it's very unfortunate because I'm definitely not the smartest kid at Cornell, yet I probably graduate with one of the highest offers I know in my class. Jeff, I'll pass it on to you to introduce yourself. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Um, hi, my name is Jeff. I recently graduated from Cornell in 2020. Uh, during Cornell, I've interned at a few small to medium to large tech companies. I've worked at startups. I've worked at uh, Microsoft, which is like a big tech company. I've also worked at Akamai, which is like a medium-sized security company. And after graduation, I worked immediately at Oracle. And I was able to negotiate a 250K signing salary um, right out of college. And I recently quit my job at Oracle to build my startup, Boba Chats. It's not as much common knowledge as we think it is, right? Like negotiating and actually taking those conversations. So can you just walk me through why negotiation is important? Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you. I definitely don't think, I don't think anyone really taught me how to negotiate. But I do think it's really important because, you know, you work so hard in school and you're just supposed to like take the first salary that's given to you. I don't know. I just don't think that's right. I think that I've seen a lot of really smart people, especially where I went to school. I went to Cornell. I've seen a really large, a lot of really smart people just get lowballed by the first offer. Uh, and it's very unfortunate because I'm definitely not the smartest kid at Cornell, yet I probably graduate with one of the highest offers I know in my class. And it's just unfortunate because like, I see my friends like way smarter than me, have like way better grades. And, you know, I just feel like they got taken advantage of. Um, and the reason why I made that post is because I just wanted to kind of share my knowledge and just my experience. You know, I, I don't want to see other people get taken advantage of. Um, you know, I especially, especially if it's like a big tech company where there is like a huge budget. Like I can understand if it's like a small startup, you know, a small company, like, where they don't really have the money to pay you, like that's very understandable. Um, but I think like if it's like, you know, Google or Facebook, sorry, Meta, <laughs> I think there's obviously wiggle room. And I think it's just very unfortunate that people don't ask. Uh, if you don't ask, you'll never receive it. So yeah, I think part of why I made that post is just to kind of just show that it is possible and that, you know, if I did it, you can do it as well. And I think typically how it usually works is you know, you start off like saying really nice things about like the company, right? Like, oh, I had an amazing experience or I had an amazing experience interviewing, whatever. And then you just say like, like, is there any possible way like it can go, go a little bit higher? And then you kind of just list out your reasons why, right? Maybe it's cost of living. Maybe it's the fact that you interned at Microsoft for four, four years in a row. And the reason is going to be very specific to you. Like there's not going to be one right answer to how to negotiate because it's very much going to be what is your competitive advantage, right? What is unique to you? Like I didn't intern at Microsoft four years in a row, so I, I couldn't say that. Uh, what I could say is the fact that I've interned at a bunch of different companies and I've interned at those companies wearing completely different hats, you know, doing very, very different things. So I'm able to have like a very broad skill set. So I think when you're negotiating, it's very important to be very honest about what you can provide and what you've done in the past. Um, so yeah, there's not going to be like one boilerplate answer on like how to negotiate and it's not going to work hundred percent of the time. Like I think a lot of factors have to go right. Like the company, the recruiter, like, you know, also your background. How much research do you generally have to do before you send out that email asking for a better offer? Oh, definitely. Like do your research. Like, cause you don't want to look stupid, right? <laughs> you only really, you only get like a shot or two at this. So definitely do your research. I think, I think when you counter, there are definitely a few things that you want to look into. One is specifically, what is the market like paying you, right? Like you can't give some outrageous number back to them unless it's like a, at least somewhat realistic. So what I did was I looked on blind, I looked on Reddit and I think, I think I saw like people were getting paid like upwards of 200 K. Uh, so I, I'm pretty sure I, that that's like around like what I countered off also, also like a little bit higher than that. Cause I knew that whatever I countered, they were going to go a little bit lower, like, you know, <laughs> so it was, I knew it was going to be somewhere in the middle. And then I think the next thing to do after like you come up with like a counter salary is 
think about what are the reasons why you would be asking for this. You know, what are like some legitimate reasons, right? For me, a cost of living, which is very obvious because it was Seattle versus San Francisco, which is like the highest like cost of living city in the world. And I also obviously brought up the team and how it was like a really strong culture fit. Because I think that one thing I, I just, but I, I also thought about it from like the company's perspective, right? Like there are a lot of really smart people in this world, but I think there are very few smart people that vibe with the company, vibe with the culture, vibe with the team. That is actually really important, right? You can't, you can buy talent, but you can't buy culture fit. But once I knew that, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to take advantage of this, right? You can't, you can't, you can't even buy it with money. Think about the things that you can't buy with money, right? Which is like, you know, your background, your experience. You can't really buy experience. So yeah, I, I think those are like the key things, right? Like, um, like doing your research on the market, bringing up, bringing up things that money can't buy, like culture fit, your, your personal experience. And yeah, <laughs> this gives lots of compliments about the team. <laughs> what are some mistakes that people commonly make that you think a student listening to this one or even myself um, should avoid? don't think of yourself as like oh my god i'm asking for money it's you're working with the recruiter i think it's i think it's also really important to frame your any like conversation you have with the recruiter as like a collaboration not just a one-way thing it's not very don't don't think of it as transactional they just think of it as like it's a relationship that you're building with the recruiter and that you're working towards you know like, like a like a like a win-win situation where like i win because i get like more money and you win because you get an excellent candidate so I think a lot of it comes from like, you know, tr- like honestly, truly self, like self-confidence, like believing that you're worth this money and that you're going to work with the recruiter and see what's possible. So I, I can talk about the mistakes that I've seen and then the mistakes that I've, I've done personally. Um, I think the most obvious one is obviously not negotiating at all. I think that's a mistake. Yeah. You should like, no matter what, you should negotiate a little bit. Like even if you can get like squeeze out, like a little bit of money out, I think that's great. Another thing is also do your research. Um, so for example, um, when I gave my counter offer, I didn't do my research enough. I, I didn't know that certain tech companies can't really raise the base salary, um, but they're, they, they can match like basically anything else. They can match your stocks, they can match your bonuses, um, but they just, they just cannot go up. Like the base is standardized. That was something I did not know because in my counter offer, if you read the email, um, I, I went pretty high, high on the base and then I kind of went like medium on everything else because I went so high on the base. But if I knew that I couldn't go high on the base and that the base was standardized, I probably would have kept the base, you know, I still would have made it go up a little bit, you know, um, just to get rejected. But, you know, but, the, but, my, but because like the company rejected me, I feel like they would have matched everything else, um, which they actually did. They matched everything else except for the base. So I think all the info you've like given today is stuff that as as even as business students, I didn't really know this this stuff. Um, and the goal of this video was that with all the information you've just given to those who are watching and myself, it can empower all of us to actually, when we're in that position, sit back and be like, okay, so here's parts of my offer. Here's here's what I know they're offering me. Um, here's what I think I'm worth and here's how I can do it. And I think we've covered that in this video. So Jeffrey himself has a YouTube channel where he talks about a lot of things that are in line with his experiences and things that as students or maybe not as students, even as graduates, you could have fun knowing. So Jeffrey, did you want to talk about your YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I actually dive into how I negotiate the salary a little bit more and also just like how to get like a high paying job in general in my YouTube channel. So definitely check it out. It's I think it's just Boba Jeff. Yeah, I also talk a little bit about like how to get like jobs in product management, um, how to quit your job successfully, and just how to start a startup. So if you want to follow my journey in building Boba Chats, go subscribe. Thank you. I'm sure a lot of students will find it useful. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in to the UBC podcast.